His ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Just like, just like Eve was deceived when she dealt directly with Satan, so many are deceived when they deal directly with this flesh and blood man who was a false prophet. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Because you got that going on in the first century, and here he's going to, he warned about the false prophets, Paul did, but he's also going to warn you about, the, again, the false prophets of false prophets. Like I said, that abomination of desolation. Who we call, who generally call the Antichrist. Not that he come in the spirit of the Antichrist. That is true, but he is the, and they call the Antichrist generally. This is 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 1. So he's going to prophesy. When you're ready, go ahead and read it. Now we beseech you, brethren. By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and by our gathering together unto him, that he be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter asked from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So they were concerned, in this letter, you can tell those at Thessalonica were concerned about the coming of the Lord. Just like his disciples said, tell us when, they came into him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of the coming in of the end of the world. He said, don't be so full of anxiety about the coming of the Lord because something has to happen first. Let's keep reading. Let no man deceive you by any means. Don't be deceived. Go ahead and read. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Mm -hmm. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So before the Lord returns, that has to be apostasy. Meaning that has to be a total turning from the faith. And that has happened. But he said, and that man of sin must be revealed. He said, the son of perdition or destruction. And what is he going to do? Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. Go ahead and read. Or that is worship. Mm -hmm. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember I said that it's about removing Christ so they can sit in the seat and be exalted. It said, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Well, you understand the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. We talked about that, but they're going to rebuild the temple. And so you have a third temple in Jerusalem. This is the temple that's being referred to here. This is why when you read in Matthew the 24th chapter, he said, when the abomination of desolation stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth that him understand, the holy place is the temple. Well, there's no temple now, but there are all these efforts to rebuild it right now. Let's go to Revelation the 13th chapter. And see this verse 5. Oh, yeah. Got to hear myself. Thank you. Go ahead and read. Remember ye not that when I was yet with Thank you, me, I told you these things. Mm -hmm. And now ye know what withholded that he might, might be revealed in his time. Mm -hmm. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. See, he's going to see that wicked one is going to be revealed in due time. So it said, it says, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. See, the spirit of Antichrist is here, only he knew how, he knew who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Because he's going to be destroyed. When you keep reading the Revelation, you understand that the beast and the false prophet. It's that thrown into, when he when the Lord returns, thrown right into the lake of fire. They're the first ones, even before Satan, that are cast into the lake of fire. It says in verse 9, go ahead and read. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And see, thank you. And this, this false prophet, he got a sign. He has some signs, doesn't he? Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power. Just like those magicians in Egypt had power. But it was from Satan. So this one, he, he is the false prophet of all false prophets. And he has power. It said, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Let's pick it up. In Reve now let's pick it up in Revelation 13. Revelation 13 and verse 11. Because here we're reading about the time of great tribulation. The time 
right before the Lord returns. He tells you to flee in, in that, in that uh, passage of Matthew 24. He said, for then shall be great tribulation. And the great tribulation is the worst time that will ever be. But let's pick it up at verse, and there is no rapture from, from uh, tribulation. But let's pick it up at verse 11. When you ready, go ahead and read. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he had two horns like a lamb, mm -hmm. and he spake as a dragon. Okay, go ahead and read. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, mm -hmm. and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, go ahead. whose deadly wound was healed. And so now we're talking about this, this false prophet here. This wicked one, this son of perdition, and what's he going to do? Verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Just like the prophets can, can of God can do, he does that. Making lightning come down from heaven. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Now, he's got a sign, right? He's doing these signs, these wonders, and now he's going to make an image. Go ahead and read. Saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword, and did live. He told, we read about how the, if, if a prophet would come, and then he said, hey, let's go follow some other guys. He got you, he got the people worshiping falsely. So they're looking at the sign, but you better be looking at what he's telling you to do. He said, you need to bow down like Nebuchadnezzar. See, and the precedent, what you should do is shown there. It'd be better for you to give up your life than to bow down to this falsehood. Because you bow down to this falsehood and take the, and take the mark of the beast, we understand that you will be cast in the lake of fire. Keep reading Revelation 14 chapter. But go ahead and read it. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So this statue, this image is going to be able to like have life even. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that what? That the image of the beast should both speak mm -hmm. and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And if you don't worship you, the image of the beast, you should be killed. So you better to give up your life uh, now than to try to preserve your life and lose eternal life. Because you're going to hell if you take the mark of the beast. Go ahead and read. And he causeth all, both small and great, Rich and poor, mm -hmm. free and bond, Go ahead. to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Go ahead and read. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And what is it? Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. Mm -hmm. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six. Six, six, six. So what we get, we hear that? You know, everybody said that's everybody from Hitler to Ronald Reagan to Nero. They said all kind of stuff, but who is that? Well, let's find out. So this, what that's talking about is the Pope. That's, it coincides with one of his titles. Now, this is from a Catholic publication, Our Sunday Visitor, April 18, 1915. It said, what are the letters supposed to be on the Pope's crown and what do they signify, if anything? These letters inscribed in the Pope's mitre are these, Vicarious Philidae, which is the Latin for Vicar of the Son of God. Why is that important? Because Vicarious Philidae, it adds up to 666. Again, the, this is from the same publication. That's a photocopy of it. It says the title of the Pope of Rome is Vicarious Philidae. Now they had this written in their own publication. This is inscribed on his mitre. And if you take the letters of his title, and add them together, they come to 666. You know, one thing about the Catholics, you know it's a bunch of Catholic scholars and different people who claim, yeah, the, anti, the uh, Antichrist or the man of sin is going to be a pope. And back in the day, all these Protestants, Jonathan Edwards, all of them, they all thought that. But even some Catholics say that. And notice what they said about themselves. Think about this man exalting. So it's one that's coming out of this office. Pope Pius V said the Pope and the God are the same, so he has all power in heaven and earth. Pope Innocent III, we may according to the fullness of our power dispose of the law and dispense above the law. Forget the law, we the law. Those whom the Pope of Rome doth separate, it is not a man that separates them but God. For the Pope holdeth place on earth, not simply of a man, but of the true God. Remember I talked about how he tried to move Jesus out the way and sit in that seat and exalt himself? He want to be worshipped. It ain't about you, though. 
Pope Leo the 13th, he said, we hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. This is blasphemy. Wicked self. Pope Boniface the eighth, we declare, assert, define, and pronounce to be subject to the Romans pontifice to every creature altogether necessary for salvation. If you want to be saved, he said, you're going to have to listen to me. I have, the, listen to this man, I have the authority of the king of kings. I am all in all and above all so that God himself and I, the vicar of Christ, the curious Philadelphia, have but one constitutory and, and I am able to do almost all that God can do. What therefore can you make of me but God? You talk about out your mind. <laughs> you know how it is? You know how sometimes people can, you know, they may get famous and then they start talking about, talking about themselves in the third person. You know, I, that's a clue somebody tripping. You know, they don't say I, they say they, their name. You know? That like if my name was Ralph and I was famous, I'd say, hey, you know, Ralph doesn't like that. What I'm talking about, what I'm talking about myself. Instead of saying, I don't like, that's how you know you're feeling yourself. This is, this is just way above that. He said, what can you make of me but God? Pope Pius IX, he said, I alone am the successor of the apostles, the vicar of Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's talking about himself. But Jesus said that about himself. This, this man his, who's dead said about himself. Pope Pius X, the Pope is not simply the representative of Jesus Christ. On the contrary, he is Jesus Christ himself under the veil of the flesh. Does the Pope speak? It is Jesus Christ who is speaking. Hence, when, when anyone speaks of the Pope, it is not necessary to examine, but to obey. Don't even think about what I'm saying. Just do it. If that ain't pimping, I don't know what it is. He's dressed like a pimp. Who you gonna believe, me or your lying eyes? Get out there on the stroll. This is what this man is doing. This is Pope Pius the, uh, the 12th. Recognize the holy Catholic Roman church is to be, only true, to be the only true church of Jesus Christ, outside of which neither sanctity nor salvation can be found. So they argue this openly that you can't be saved if you're not a Catholic. Call them to the unity of the one fold, granting them the grace to believe every truth of our holy faith and to submit themselves to the supreme Roman pontiff. Again, the vicar of Jesus Christ on earth. I can't, I, a vicar is a replacement. I can't read where there's a replacement for Christ. Now, this first comes up, this vicarious philidae is from this Catholic father, Lucie Perverse, where he writes, as the blessed Peter was constituted vicar of the Son of God, which is not true. He wasn't the first pope. It said, on earth, so it is seen that the pontiffs, his successors, that's all a lie, Hold for us and our empire the power of a supremacy on the earth greater than the clemency of our earthly imperial serenity. And that's vicarious philade. It's Latin, Roman numerals. When you add it up, that's how you get 666. But now let's go to the last place here. This is Matthew. Because again, we want to take heed to what the prophet of prophets said. Once again, let's take heed to his word. This is Matthew, the seventh chapter. And we'll pick it up at verse 15. Matthew, the seventh chapter, and verse 15. And when you're ready, brother, go ahead and read. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, mm -hmm. but inwardly they are ravening wolves. He said, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. See, beware. These men, beware of false prophets. These men look righteous. He said, they dressed as sheep, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. They're trying to destroy them, destroy you. And how will you know them? Ye shall know them by their fruits. Go ahead. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? That's how you'll know them. You'll know them by what they do. Again, if he's telling you a word or doing a, uh, giving you a sign or some dream, and it's contrary to the word, you know that he was not sent from God. And that's my heart is broken because of the prophets. It's always my prayer that you will edify. Yeah. Nothing in there. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you clean up. You clean up and lose everything. I need watching the clean up. 
Can't find the announcements. But I will read this. Uh, this is uh, just to keep in mind that the uh, Memorial of Lord of the Trumpets begins Friday, September 15th at sundown and ends Saturday, September 16th at sundown. Service will be held on Saturday, September 16th at 1 p.m. That's what time it is. They got to be around here somewhere. Here they go. See? Trying to be neat. Can't find anything. That's why you don't need to clean up. I, I shouldn't have cleaned. Go ahead and try to read that, brother. This is the Household of Faith announcements. You can find us on the web at IsraelTeach.org or on our Israel Teach YouTube page. Mm -hmm. We also have scriptural Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Zoom. The personal meeting ID for that is 845-710-8849. Again, that's 845-710-8849. Our question of answer Bible study is at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. The personal meet Zoom meeting ID for that is 602-961-1318. Again, that's 602 602- 961-1318. The household of faith has a dress code. This is for the brothers. Brothers should not wear, ha wear head coverings during services. This includes, but it's not limited to hats, caps, scarf, turbans, or beanies, or and stocking caps. All attire should not be form-fitting. Form-fitting is the finest clothes that fits the body tightly so that the bodily shape is clearly visible. For example, no skinny jeans are allowed. Pants must be pulled up to the waist. No sagging is allowed. Sagging is defined as a manner of wearing trousers or jeans that sag so that the top of the trousers or jeans is significantly below the waist, sometimes revealing much of the underpants or shorts. Jogging pants are not allowed. Ripped jeans or pants are not allowed. Sleeveless shirts are not allowed. Shorts are not allowed. This is for the sisters. Sisters are required to wear head coverings during services. Head coverings should cover the top of the head, the crown, and reach the nape of the neck. Sisters are to wear dresses and skirts to service.